Here we go. Get ready. We've all been warned the cicadas are coming. But is this something we should all look forward to experiencing? Kind of like we just did with the eclipse. As you have no doubt heard, this is the first time since 1803 that two broods or generations of cicadas will rise simultaneously in 15 states. And Illinois is lucky enough, depending on how you look at it, to be one of them. So we are joined by award-winning entomologist, Dr. Sam Ramsey. He is assistant professor of entomology, University of Colorado in Boulder. Good morning or good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. I'm so glad to be here. Thanks for inviting me. So glad to have you. So many questions. So let's just start with the first one. Why are cicadas so darn loud? <laughs> That's a great question. And I want you to consider if you were stuck underground for 17 years, never seeing any other creature that looks like you and then you finally get to go above ground you finally get to meet others you're probably gonna be a little bit loud about it maybe a little bit obnoxious a little and they are no doubt we remember 17 years ago when we just had the one brood and here we go which we want to get into that in just a minute but first of all i know you are so excited about this that you're even <laughs> singing about it so pause for a second and let's take a listen it's been 17 years and uh I need to make sure she hear this. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. I've been living in my own little world underground till I found you, girl. All right, then. <laughs> you are so excited. You've been singing about it. Tell us, why should we be as excited as you are about this? I think what people miss in all of the sensationalized headlines about a cicada apocalypse and the swarm and invasion is that this is actually a beautiful and incredible experience. First of all, it's great for the environment. These organisms have been underground and there's a trillion plus of them that are going to emerge all at once. They're gonna provide a lot of food for the animals around, which is going to make for larger populations of a lot of the animals that we know and love. But then when they die, they contribute all of that energy back to the environment and in the interim, in between, you get to hear this beautiful symphony, this love song of all of these creatures that just don't want to do anything but love the, the rest of their population. And for as long as they last, which I understand is not very long. Okay, I was looking Never. at a map that you have on your website. Um, it appears that not all states are going to be seeing this combination that we are here in Illinois. Uh, explain that and why we are so lucky where we are um, and why you're a little jealous of us, aren't you? <laughs> I'm actually very <laughs> jealous of you guys because they're, I mean, out of the 15 states where these organisms are going to be emerging, um, we've had a lot, heard a lot of people talking about how uh, the, the entire of the United States is going to be swamped with cicadas, and that's just not the case. Um, there's only about 15 states where it's occurring and only one state where the two broods will actually overlap, and you'll be able to see both of them in the same place at the same time. And that is an incredible experience, something that hasn't been seen in 221 years, and something that, I mean, it's just hard to imagine with these two different species at the same time allowing their songs to overlap. It's just something that I can't possibly imagine. Well, okay, so let's talk about this, because as I said, I remember 17 years ago, um, and then I remember 17 years ago saying, they're gonna be here in another 17 years. I didn't know that we were gonna be seeing so many different types of broods, so how do cicadas keep track of this time underground? And just so you know, we're already seeing some little holes in the ground now, so, right? Yes. Oh my goodness. Okay, so these little turrets that they build um, when they're about to emerge, it seems to be a way for them to sample the temperatures just to make sure the weather is just right. If you've been underground for 17 or 13 years, you want to get it right when you go above ground. You don't want a thunderstorm to interrupt things. So uh -oh. they're sampling the environment around them to make sure that they all emerge at the right time. But over the course of several years, they've had to figure out some method of counting that allows them to all sync up together. And so it seems to be the case that they sample some of the nutrients that are in the roots of the trees. And these nutrients cycle year on year such that they can tell, all right, we're getting back around to the cycle again. So it's been two years, three years, four years, five years, and then eventually, when they reach 17, they go closer to the surface of the soil, they build these little 
turrets sometimes, and they use that as a way of determining, is it just the right time in this 17th year for wow. all of us to emerge? It's really quite remarkable. It is pretty cool. Dr. Sam Ramsey, so excited to talk to you today. And um, I know you said you might be heading our direction. If so, we want to see you in the studio. We'll get up close and personal with you and the cicadas. Thanks for joining I us would today. I love that. Thanks so much for <laughs> inviting me out. We look forward to it. Talk to you very soon, I hope. Take See care. Ya. Okay.